welcome your host, it's Sharon Osborne. Wednesday show. There's so much coming up over the next hour. I tell you, well, joining me to talk about his remarkably honest new autobiography, it's Michael Barry. <laughs> I will be meeting the daughter from hell whose mum and dad went through brat camp with her and they survived. Performing her new single live in the studio, it's the amazingly talented Amy Winehouse. <laughs> now, Michael Barrymore has had a very turbulent couple of years, but he's just returned to Britain and to the spotlight for the launch of his new book. Please welcome Michael Barrymore. <laughs> Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see it. What's that? That's Minnie. Oh, Min. Hello, Hello Min. Min. Oh. Hello. Hello. Min. <laughs> oh. What's it like to be back here? Are oh, you happy to be back? I am. I'm thrilled to be back, and I'm thrilled to get the uh, reaction from everybody that I thought, um, you know, I, I was led to believe, not by everybody, not by the public, but by certain people that, you know, I was worthless, and... Uh, I went away to get myself together, and I got myself together, and I come back, and they've been so warm since the Big Brother, and I realised, you know, a lot of it was in my head and all that, and you know, I had to deal with what I had to deal with, and whatever. I have to remember other people have got their problems as well, you know. So we all what? do. Yeah, we Eat all do. So it's, it's, it's brilliant to be back, and brilliant to be back in the studio where I made so so much of my stuff. It's a bit choky at times, but I think I've done enough crying this year. <laughs> <laughs> um, I must say that the book reads like a bad novel. It's like I can't believe that this is happening. Yeah, it does ban from one thing to the other. It it's does. Like it's, a, it's a really big roller coaster ride. Yeah. Because, I mean, I just remember you as, you know, the huge Michael Barrymore that everyone used to sit in and watch day after day yeah. after day. Yeah. And you were like, you know, Mr Showbiz. Yeah. Were you happy when you were, like, getting all those yeah. accolades I'll... and... The trouble was, I was happy. I was happy, like in this environment with an audience. That was, you know, because I did it since I was. I knew what I wanted to do when I was eight years of age, and I'm just lucky enough to be able to do it. I didn't think this world was for me. I thought that stars come from a special place. It wasn't for the likes of me. So I was happy enough to be on stage, just get paid for what I did, and then just be in front of a crowd, and from making my mates laugh to doing it for a living, and that was enough for me. But you... I, I'm not good off stage. I wasn't. Do you think you changed when you became, you know, no. a big celebrity? Yeah, it changed me. Success breeds its own unemployment, so you get paid more for doing less and you've got more time to look at yourself. And when I looked at myself, I spent all my life making everybody else happy and then I found, I thought, I didn't rec know who I was or I didn't have any identity unless I was out in front of a crowd. I come to life, I don't know what it is, you know, I could be the other side there quite quiet. And then uh, when I come out, I don't know, they, it just, I feel alive. I do now. It just, um, I did everything around the wrong way. Everything I should have done at 19, I did at 40-odd onwards. And it looks a bit strange when you're 40-odd clubbing, you know, like... <laughs> I, just go, I started going to the clubs and wearing my baseball out. I'm six foot three, up against the wall, no. like that, <laughs> till four in the morning. And they go, oh, hello, Michael, what are you doing here? And I go, I'm... So, <laughs> you know, it looks a bit strange, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. So you really, like, had the... Um, what is it when people buy a red sports car when men... Midlife crisis. Did yeah. you have that? Yeah, I had But that. didn't you come screaming out the closet? <laughs> Not screaming. <laughs> you, you didn't come out the closet. I, you came screaming I out. I came flying out of there. I don't come screaming. Out. Screaming is, ah, ah, I'm here. But that's... No, I didn't do a Danny LaRue, you know. 29 years in the business. Ha-ha. <laughs> <laughs> With feathers stuck up my backside, I should care. <laughs> That's a daddy way of doing it, but a me way of doing it is, hello, I'm gay. Oh, whoops. 
you didn't just wake up one day and say I'm gay. You no. knew you were gay for a no, long time. I, I, at the beginning, I was brought up in Bermondsey when it wasn't all a lot of money like it is now, and uh, Catholic, you know, in that environment where you didn't put your hand up and say, I think I've got a problem. I think I might be slightly different. So the priests were going like, well, you know, if you get to 21 and you've still got this problem, then worry. So I thought, I held on to 21. And then I thought, I'd get married. And I loved her to death. I loved Cheryl to death. And there's all a lot being written. And, you know, we had a fantastic time together. I was a husband, a lover, a child, a career. That was everything. She invested... There's every, a, a there's, great picture. Yeah. But it's... It's, listen, nobody yeah. knows what goes on between two people. People can speculate and rumours and talk, but when two people are together, no one knows what it's like. Absolutely not. So, you know that. But, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and a lot of it, when we split, I think with Cheryl was anger at me. And a lot of stuff I wrote in the book about her, when I looked at the first draft, I thought, I'm just being angry at her. This is personal. The reader doesn't need to see that. They need to see the facts. And me, for, to, me to say, actually, what was my part in it? And, and not be frightened to point the finger at myself. I, I don't, I'm not frightened to have a go at myself in there. No, because the thing is, none of us are victims. And the thing is, she can't answer back. No, she can't now. So. And, 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 and a lot of it, because... And don't forget, I'm going on about her being controlling, which she was. But I allowed it. Oh, women are. Come on. Uh, like, <laughs> you don't love it. I know. Well, you want to be controlled. Well, Sharon, I totally agree. I think, I think men mentally get to the age of 12, and after that, they just grow older. They're twi they're all, they're all of them, every bloke in here is 12. Of course they are. Mentally, they are 12. You see all the blokes going, because they know it, you know? Because <laughs> they, they want to, the, the model aeroplanes, the train sets, they want to make out it's via the sun and all that. It's crap, it's rubbish. And the women have to put up with this 12-year-old who's getting older all the time and the air's going, you know, and stuff like that. With a cat round the other way doing this. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> no I didn't wear it round the other way. I did oh, the proper way round oh, like okay. that. And um, you remind me a lot of Cheryl. Uh, controlling and no, no, strong. No, no, and... no. <laughs> no look wise. Look wise. Really? Just, yeah, no, no, she was passionate about me. I, I have to ask you, do you think that the breakup with Cheryl had a lot to do with your kind of. Losing my way? Yeah, losing yeah. the plot. Yeah, even more, because I needed that. Con uh, to, to, to a degree, I'm no good on my own. I'm not good with myself at all. I admit that. I'm not good at much by the sound of this interview, am I? <laughs> You know what you I mean? Are, no, you but, are. You uh, know you are. And it, I think you were right when you said that you're kind of like reliving your childhood at 40. It was yeah. just the wrong time. Just the wrong time. Yeah. Because uh, when I was 19 and that, all my mates, like, they were out doing what they, you should do at 19 and 20. But I, I was so busy getting a career together. I didn't play golf. I didn't get involved in anything. I was just everything for the business. But, I, you know, I got a career out of it. Are you a workaholic? Yeah. You are? Yeah. And you wanted to be famous? Yeah, I suppose so. I wanted to be in the business and I wanted to do the best I could do. I didn't realise that, you know, it, it would get me where I got, got. So, and you never know how much you've got. You don't know how far, uh, what amount of talent you've got until you stretch it. Or the amount of power that you can obtain by being that Yeah, it is very popular. powerful. It's very but powerful. I, I think I recognise that as a kid because I originally made my mates laugh to stop them asking questions about me dad because he was drunk all the time and I was embarrassed. And when you live in flats, they're all going, oh, your dad came home stoned. So I'd make them laugh, and I found by making them laugh, it's powerful. They didn't ask you any oh, questions. Sure. They yeah. didn't ask me questions. Don't you like a drink, though? Don't I like a drink? Yeah. Do you drink? No, I've given I've five and a half years oh, you sober have? now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, after eight rehabs, I toured rehabs. Did a tour of them. Now I say that my old man can do the Egon Rone book on rehabs. <laughs> How old was he done? About fourteen. He's done 14. You I'm thought you were doing good by Eight, I've done eight. eight. Yeah. Oh, I've got a few more to go. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you'd like to be in with a chance of winning £10,000, this is how you can enter my competition. All you have to do is answer this question. Michael Barrymore's on the show, but which show is he famous for? Is it A, My Kind of Music, B, My Kind of Food, or C, My Kind of Books? Call 0901 360 0033 or text Mrs O and then A, B or C to 84066 or press red on your remote control. Calls and texts cost a pound plus the standard network charge. Good luck. I'll be back after the break with more chat with Michael Barrymore. I'll see you in a minute. Yeah. Come back. It's Welcome back. I'm 
still here joined by Michael Barrymore. Hello. Now, in the break, we were having a little goss about where Michael is living, because you're still living in New Zealand. Yeah, uh, when I get back there, I mean, at the moment, I'm over uh, doing the book, obviously, and, um, and then I go on to um, start rehearsals for Scrooge mm -hmm. in a couple of weeks' time. That's going to be great. I hope so, yeah. I'm really looking forward. It's a hard part, but it's a brilliant show. And, you know, you, you... the only sad thing is I'm now old enough to play Scrooge. <laughs> <laughs> now, tell me, why did you choose New Zealand? Was that the furthest you could get away? <laughs> it sounds like it, but no. Uh, the, I was doing a tour, a live tour, years ago, and about eight, nine, ten years ago, and that was the last country, and everybody fell in love with the place. And Sean, my partner, comes from there. He's got mm. family there as well. Oh. So it was just a natural place to go. So how long have you been together now, you and Sean? Uh, about eight years. With well, a year when he, he left when I was too much, when, before I got well again. You know, I was just drinking too much and that. And he just, understandably, it's best... If you've got the problem in the household... And, the trouble with uh, addiction is everybody's ill from it. That's the problem with it. Uh, as you might know, you know, everybody gets sick from it, you know. It's not just the person who's got the drinking problem. So, were you doing drugs as well? Yeah, on and off, yeah. I preferred the booze. I just... All I wanted to do was change the way I felt. I hate the taste of drink. I hate the taste of anything. I even hate the taste of tablets or whatever. But it was just to change the way I felt. I never took anything before I worked. Weird, isn't it? That I should have that discipline. Yeah. Although it looked, I might have looked like I was off my trot when I was working. <laughs> you know, some of the stuff I got up to. But that was just, what? Adrenaline. What are you laughing at? No, it's true. It's true. <laughs> I never thought that you were off your head in anything that you did. You were just, you could tell uh, that you just... Why do you I think know, I have to qualify it then? I don't know why. Why? Because you've got low self-esteem. Need oh, to believe I'm in going yourself. Into a relapse more. now. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe really sort yourself I've got out. Call up Ozzy. I'll tell you which one to go I to. I don't want Ozzy. No, please. Don't <laughs> <have to>. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, it's just yeah, and I, and um, uh, it, as soon as I come off, I'd start drinking as quick as I could to change the way I felt. Not sit there and say this is a nice glass of wine or this is a nice white or whatever. No, you drank to get drunk. Yeah, to change the way I felt. Yeah. Yeah. So, the autobiography, whose idea was it? Well, the Simon and Schuster asked me if I'd do it, and then I, at first I said, no, I don't think so, and then they said, well, you know, the others will start writing stuff like that, and then I, they said, I said, if I can put what I need to put, and you'll go with that, fair enough. I mean, I've still got my whole story in there, and I also have to talk about what happened with, you know, with the Lubbock situation with Stuart, and I've kept it down so it, it's precise and absolutely to the word, of what actually happened from witness statements and exactly. So instead of a mixed up version that has been around for the last God knows how many years. Was and they allowed me to do that. That must have been one of the worst nights of your life, sir. It was. You don't wake up in the morning and and I have to remember, Sharon, whatever however much a nightmare I've been through and come through the other side, it I, I'm, it still has to be second place to what happened to to the Lubbocks and what they have to deal with. But it doesn't mean that I should get bashed and slaughtered for something I, I didn't do forevermore, you know. I'm entitled to have a life, my life back, at least. And at least be considered things. I'm not saying I should be given a show. I should at least have a chance to be considered when I haven't done anything wrong, you know. But this is the first time I've had a chance, and I felt better to be able to talk about it. I mean, I was on Fern... Is it Fern and Philip? You yeah. know, that was the first, yeah. like, the other week. And at the end, Fern goes, tell me, are you on medication now? <laughs> You just said that you, you know, you haven't come back because you want a, a show or whatever. Yeah. But you, obviously, you want to come back. You want to get your life back on track yeah, and I do, do what you do best, which is entertain. That's it. I don't know anything else. I, 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 that's all I know. I'm that's all I'm qualified for. Um, I, if I had to do something else, I'd have to do it. You know, as long as you've got something to eat and a roof over your head, you know. Yeah, sure. As long as it's a nice big roof. <laughs> <laughs> Did you save your money? Huge, great roof. Did you <laughs> save your money? I saved a bit, yeah. Good. Uh, I managed so you're to... not brassic? Mm, nah. No. Well, that's good. That's well, good. I could do it a little bit more. We all could, right? We all could. But does it feel like you are well, home? Well, can I have some of yours, then? <laughs> I might have to model with a comeback, then, will I? <laughs> does it feel like home? You're quite being, clearly, though? obviously, not going to give me any of yours at all. Right? No. No. I'm very generous, are you? No. <laughs> I'm a title back. No, I'm not. <laughs> so tell me, 
Are you at home now you're back here? Answer me. Yes, I am now. I'm, I'm back here. Yeah, I am back home. You I've got a place it. in uh, New Zealand. But you, you want to come back? Yeah, I'd, I'd love to, you know. And I don't, I don't, I've never assumed anything, so when the time's right, you know. But perfect case scenario, if you could write the next chapter of your life, would be? I'd like to do what I've always done uh, on whatever level that is and um, live in my home. Just so, that's I like to live in my home and, and visit places like everybody else does. That's all. But big. Claudio, <laughs> <laughs> you don't want much then. No, I don't. Well, it'd be what it'd be. You know, I'm just pleased to have me back. I lost me. When you lose you, this applies to anybody in the audience, anybody at home. When you lose you and get you back, that is so major. The last thing you worry about is a series, or you know, it puts it all in perspective. And. Uh, that, that's enough of me. Thank you, Michael. Oh, thank you so Darren much. Darren Moore, so much. Oh, thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Darren. Thank you. You're coming back in. Yeah. Now, everybody knows that my family has had the odd Barney over the years, but nothing, and I mean nothing, compares with this lot. Oh. Christmas night when Amanda come home drunk or something else, she was like unbelievable. Why are you doing this? What the? Why are you making this? Oh my! Fat. Get out of my room. Get the out of the room now! As long as she was possessed, waiting for her head to spin round. Luckily, Sandra's mum, who was kind of staying come in and got hold of her, calmed her down, but it, it took a good two to three hours to calm her down. Don't get the camera off me! You're asking nicely. When you're asking nicely, you probably will. Off me. Right, nicely. Please. Nice. No. We want her back how she used to be. Or even a little bit like she used to be, not like she is now. We don't know what to do next. Joined by Bill and Sandra Kennedy and their daughter Amanda and Teen Tamer Lorene, my good mate. <laughs> now, Amanda, how do you feel watching that? Well, I think it's funny. <laughs> can, I, can I just ask what was funny? Don't know, just going mental. So, Showing yourself up and embarrassing yourself and doing all of that stuff is funny. If you can persuade me that's funny, I'll put my hands up. What no, was funny? I think it's funny watching it now. It weren't funny at the time, obviously. OK. The knife just terrified me. I mean, that is, like, one step beyond. Yeah. OK, Bill and Sandra. Yeah. How did your baby do after she went to camp? Hmm. Oh. You know, when she come back, she went straight back into most of the things that she was doing. But she has changed quite a bit, to be quite honest. She has? She has, yeah. She For, the For the better? For the better, For the better? Yeah. In what ways has she changed? Yeah, there's no more tantrums, is there? Yeah, no, she don't talk to us like the call us names like she was calling us now. What did you hope that you would get out of the experience of going to Brat Camp? Just to stop the drugs and get on better with Mum and Dad. What drugs were you doing? Coke, crack, E, pot. Crack? Yeah. OK. That's it, really. And has that happened? Yeah, we get on better now. I don't take drugs anymore. <laughs> Sandra, as a mum, did it help you going along with Amanda to Brat Camp? No, I didn't. <laughs> it was really, really hard. It's really hard. Why? Well, all of it. I've never ever been camping, never done anything like that before. And I felt that we was being punished. I felt that we had been through enough with all the way she was behaving to us. And then having to go there and do all the same as what she was doing. Did, did, did you find that the experience bonded you all? Yeah, because you were out in the desert for, like, three weeks and we've only got each other's company, so... Can only really talk to each other. You have people you don't really know to talk to. 
I saw the programme and, and the problem I had was that it was kind of, it was unreal because you, you're not solving the problems where they're happening. Yeah. You're solving the problems in another place. You haven't really changed that much, have you? No. Right. So you've got no strategies when you come back from the middle of nowhere and you've actually come back to the home where everything happened the way it was before. Yeah. Are you still at school? No. No. You work? I'm looking for a job. Where do you live? Um, with my boyfriend. How old is he? 20. How long have you been living with your boyfriend? I just, I don't live there, I just stay there every night. Oh, so oh. you <laughs> haven't, you <laughs> haven't, OK, you haven't officially left home. You just stay at his every night. Every and then night. come home Comes when you want to. Bath, throws the dirty washing on the floor and then goes back out again. Oops. Do we <laughs> like the boyfriend? No. We don't like the boyfriend. No. no. OK. Um, doesn't that make you feel awkward that you can't bring him home and, and make him part of the family and do family things together? Yeah, I wish it could be that I could bring him home and that part. It's not going to happen. Bill, are you worried about what's going to happen to Amanda long term? Yeah, we're I mean, all worried. She, yeah. What, what, you, what are your aims? What are your goals, Amanda? I haven't really got any. You haven't got Do you no have any desire to do something? No? Not really. What makes you happy? Spending money. But that's money. I was just going to say who's money. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Your boyfriend ain't got any, has he? You yeah. don't know nothing. Don't know. Stop, Stop here, no. Mrs. See that? Hey! Hey! <laughs> right! I yeah. think she needs a good weekend with us. <laughs> <laughs> hey! Absolutely! I think we've got to re-establish a relationship here. You've got to clear the grounds, really, and you've got to start again. And I think that Amanda needs to understand what it is that you want from her. You need to put some boundaries in place. This girl can do what she wants, say what she wants, when she wants, how she wants. Right, where's the boundaries? You're so scared that she's going to turn around and say, I don't like you, go to hell, or words to that effect, and, and disappear out of your life, that you are just saying, OK, OK. It's what I call the eggshell syndrome. Mm -hmm. All so. right, listen, guys, I wish you all the luck in the world. Can we have, a, please, a round of applause for Amanda, Bill, Sandra and Louise? Good luck. We're taking a quick break, but we will be back with Kathy Lett, who will be telling us why women aren't getting so much of you-know-what these days. Well, speak for yourself, Mrs, because I am. <laughs> anyway, see you in a minute. It's Sarah! Now, a new book has caused a right old fuss in America because it claims that you-know-what within marriage is boring. So is it right? I don't know. Well, joining me now is best-selling author Kathy Lett and editor of GQ magazine, Dylan Jones. <laughs> Does anybody know that women are having less sex well, and don't want the sex in marriage? How do we all know that? Well, I do a lot of in-depth research, you know, I've over cappuccinos with girlfriends, and I realised uh, that, you know, we used to worry so much about how much sex we had before marriage, but all my married friends were worrying so much about how much little sex they were having after marriage. You're not supposed to talk about it, but for most women, when they finally slump into bed at 11 o'clock at night, when they've, you know, worked all day, done the dinner, done the homework, put the washing on. The one thing they're fantasising about is sleep and then they get the hand and they think, oh no, not the hand. I think men make horror movies called The Blob and The Thing and Dracula. Women would make the hand. <laughs> now, Dylan, I you're not agreeing. Oh. <laughs> you are not agreeing with any of this. Well, I think my, my wife appears to be very happy. I'm very happy. I, I, I think you're talking to the wrong women, frankly. Well, I don't want to meet any of these no, women either. I did back it up statistically too. We know that women now, these so-called liberated women in this millennium, are having less sex than our repressed sisters in the 1950s. And the reason has to be that we're just exhausted. I mean, even though we make up 50% of the workforce, we're still doing 99.9% .9 of all the housework and childcare. And my husband always That's said to him, true. you've got to help me more around the house. Yeah. 
I was said to him, you've got to help me more around the house. And he's like, I, I'd like to, but I can't multitask. And I think, I bet he'd have no trouble multitasking at an orgy. He'd have no particular trouble at that time. I don't um, agree with that women mm. are having less sex. I don't know where I've been, but I'm not. Oh. <laughs> but you're How much sex do you have? Not enough, I'm telling you. How not not enough at all. Now I'm asking you, how many times a week do you have it with your old man? Well, I only will have it with him if he has helped me around the house and I'm not feeling resentful. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Why is that unfair? That's bribery. What about, what about conjugal rights? Oh, God, where are we, mid-Victorian times? I wish. <laughs> no, I think, you know, what, what, what turns a woman you on? You didn't answer that question either. What was the question? Uh, how, many, how many times a week you have sex? Well, if he's helped me around the house, probably once. You're but otherwise, me up. No, no. What, are you so doing unfair. it every night? Are you doing it every... See, I think with a woman, their favourite position is the doggy position, <laughs> where he begs and you just roll over and play dead. <laughs> you keep doing that. That's what I do. <laughs> This is all new to me. I'm loving listening to this because I don't think you and I agree with any of this, do we, Dylan? No, I'm sorry. From a man's point of view, yes. have you ever been in bed with your missus, who is gorgeous, by the way, I know her, um, and she's saying to you, Dylan, Dylan, darling, and you go, oh, no, I've got a headache. Once. <laughs> And shall I tell you what? She's never, ever, ever let, let me forget, forget it. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Once, when we were uh, pre-marriage, when we were courting, when we were dating, and, uh, yeah, I think it was like a date... I don't know. It, it was between date 10 and date 20. And I, it's one time she offered sex and I refused, and she's never, ever let me forget it. What was your That's excuse? Was what was tired. your excuse? Oh, you I were tired. too tired. That's all right. You know, what's interesting is that, that, you know, divorce statistics are very high in Britain. They're the highest in Europe. And for the first time ever, the majority of those divorces are being instigated by women. So it's in men's interest, actually, to keep us happy and keep us wanting to be married. Because marriage suits men much more than it suits I women. I think men work harder these days. I think that um, men work harder at everything, seriously. I think in terms of um, the way they dress, uh, the way they treat women... Um, you don't, you don't think so? No. No, but go on, I I'm think, I think, I think, well, women are more powerful these days. They have parity mm. uh, in the workplace. Men help increasingly at home. And I think that men have to try harder these days. And I think you should appreciate it, frankly. Well, I don't think they're trying hard enough. We still don't have equal pay. Are you winding me up? Yeah, no, he is. No. no, you really believe that? He is. We don't have equal pay. I think, so I think men, pence in the pound. men feel more insecure now than they have done for a very long time. And I think that if you take women's magazines, 30 years ago, you'd look at the cover of Cosmopolitan and it would be all about exploiting women's insecurities. Now you look at the cover of women's magazine and it's all about empowerment. Mm. It's well, about it's girl power. Turn isn't it? Don't you think it's our turn? And really, now that women are economically independent and we can impregnate ourselves, I mean, really, if our sex aids <laughs> could kill spiders in the bathtub... Not, not the old turkey yeah, baster the turkey. again. But really, if our, if our vibrators could kill spiders in the bathtub, light the barbie, kiss her upper eyelids and tell us we don't look fat and stretch lycra, would we need men at all? I think some of them do. Maybe actually. not. <laughs> <laughs> so, OK. Kathy. Yeah. How do you suggest that women keep that side of their um, lives alive yes. and exciting? Yes. You don't think that they should say they're tired all the time, or well, do no, you? I think the onus is on the men. I honestly think well, we that at the be. moment, well, I would say what a woman really wants in bed is breakfast. <laughs> and if, that, if a man showed us some courtesy and took a little care of us and didn't take us for granted, we might just let him have us for lunch. <laughs> You said this earlier on. I mean, you have to, you, you you have to work. You have to work at a marriage. Oh, it all sounds so uh, no it's fun. True. Come on, it's Working true. Working in a marriage. <gasps> you can't just you know you can't just take things for granted. And I think after a while, after the kind of first flush is over, if you don't work at it, then it'll break. Um, but all women. And, I agree. Well, it's true, isn't yeah. it? You know, but, yeah, I, I, but men, I think, actually at. realise that now. Yeah. And I think, you know, previous generations didn't. And mm. men were very isolated and they were very cold. And they lived quite separate lives from their mm. wives. That's not true anymore. No. But I don't think it's a hard equation. I don't think you have to be Einstein to work out what women want. We want, someone, we want men to hug us occasionally when we're not horizontal. That would be quite good. You know, a lot of men can find affection to oh, times of erection. Oh, 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 oh good, that's darling. nice. Lie down. <laughs> 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 but 
I mean, what men to talk to us too? I mean, don't, I mean, I, Aussie's not like this, I'm sure, but I often feel that my small intestine communicates with me more often than my husband, you know. And wordplay is foreplay for women. <laughs> You know, and just do a bit more housework. No woman ever shot her husband when he was vacuuming. Oh, I don't you know are about such that. an old-fashioned, stereotypical idea of men, and it's yeah, so men, unfair. Why do men have you to really do the do. housework? No, Get a maid. Well, <laughs> I mean, I just think happy wife equals happy life. It's not a complicated equation. My wife is happy, I think. I, I wish you were here and we could ask so, her. Yeah, I'm really glad yeah. she isn't. Well, I think that we shall. Um, continue to agree to disagree. I want to thank Cathy and Dylan very much. Thank you. <laughs> now, it's almost time for Sharon wants a word, but first, here's how you can enter our competition. All you have to do is answer this question. Michael Barrymore's on the show, but which show is he famous for? Is it A, my kind of music, B, my kind of food, or see my kind of books. Call 0901 360 0003 or text Mrs O and then A, B or C to 84066 or press red on your remote control. Calls and texts cost a pound plus the standard network charge. Good luck. Joining me as my assistant today is the fabulous Michael Barrymore. Sure, you've been barking. Now, our lucky caller could win a thousand pounds today. Mm. And on the phone, we've got Melanie from Birmingham. Hello, Melanie. How Hello. are you? I'm yeah, I'm fine, all right. thank you. Yeah, I'm all right. I'm all right, thank you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> say hello to Michael. All right, Tanya. Hello, yeah, I'm all right, how are you? All right. <laughs> all right, now then. Do you know the rules? I do. Fabulous. OK. Michael, please reveal the word of the day. The word is... Very <laughs> hard. All right. Oh. Can I have... Oh. oh, this is like a madhouse in here today. Can I have the clock, please? <laughs> Set up. <laughs> Let's begin. Something you pierce. Something you pierce. The ear. An ear. Right. A famous person. Ozzy Osbourne. Oh, thank you. Right, shut up, you. Oh, no, not you. The dog. <laughs> Something you find in a bedroom. Bed. A bed. Thank you, Michael. A fruit. An apple. Good girl. Something you buy in a supermarket. Oh, uh, Ribena. Ribena. Ooh. A tap of flour. A rose. <laughs> A form of exercise. Rowing. What are you doing? Well, she said this. What are you? A form of exercise. Rowing. Rowing. Yeah. Right. An animal. An animal. A monkey. A monkey. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations, because you have won a thousand pounds. And Michael didn't help you at all, I know. <laughs> and a huge thank you to Michael Barrymore. Oh. Look at this. <laughs> touch a boy. Right. Touch her. I'll touch her. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> to <the> break <laughs> with men whose whole bliss is desperate in need of some women. <laughs> Welcome back. Now, there's a town in Cumbria where men outnumber women ten to one. So the guys decided to do something about it. The story began one summer evening in the remote Cumbrian town of Alston. A group of lads looked around their local and saw that there were ten men to every woman. Not one of them had a girlfriend. Cheers. So they dreamt up a campaign. By the time I arrive, Vince has put up posters in neighbouring towns, calling Alston the Ibiza of the North 
and inviting girls to sample the delights of the Alston Mail. I wouldn't like to use the word desperate, but we are needy. We're desperate enough to set up a website and put lonely hearts there. Ever since I was really young, all I've really wanted was a proper girlfriend. I've, all, I've never just wanted you know, to see Brown. I've always wanted a girlfriend, someone I could really be in love with. I'm joined by lonely builder Vince Peart. Vince, why did you set up the website? Well, I was sat in the pub um, last summer, and it was a Friday night, you know, when you're out looking for a date, you're looking out to have a laugh. And I looked around me and there were 17 men and one girl and the one girl was going out with the toughest man in the pub so we didn't even dare look at her, let alone talk to her. <laughs> Is that really true? You outnumber women 10 to 1 yeah, in Cumbria. Between the ages of 18 to 30 in my town there's around uh, 10 more single men to available ladies. Why do you think that is? Um, well, as you know now, more, more, girls have become more independent. I mean, in the past 40 years, you know, women, it's been acceptable for women to go out and get jobs and move away. And of course, more people are going to university. So in small villages and in rural areas, there's a lot of jobs for men. But if you're a lady and you want success, well, they're moving away. So what I thought, if our women are leaving, then maybe there's lonely women in the city who want to replace them. So has it worked? Well, it has. Um, a lot of men on the website have had a, a, a lot of contact. Uh, I get emails from the men of the town saying, you know, this is the best thing you've ever done for me. They, they absolutely love it. And I met a, a girl myself. She was a, a lovely girl called Charlotte. And um, I was with her for five months, but um, sadly we split up. The, the ironic thing is she didn't like the media retention and the fact I was making a documentary. And yet the first time she saw me, I was on Breakfast News, and her mum says, he looks like a nice man, you want to rig him, he's better than the boys around here. Was she your first serious girlfriend, Vince? Um, I had a, a few girlfriends before that, but she, she was the first one that I really felt special about, because, you know, she was kind of what I'd been looking for, and it was so romantic as well. Did you know, she to... break your heart when she ended it? Um, yeah, in a way, I was, I was really sad, you know, since I split up with her, I haven't really gone for anybody because you know I thought I had it all, her all when I was um, with Charlotte and so I sort of took a break from the ladies to um, help my town out see what I could do for the village. Aww. <laughs> all right we're gonna have a look at, at some of the candidates that are on your website okay and the first one is <laughs> Ian O'Brien and he's 24 year old soldier likes working out and he's a great cook fabulous man he's an ex-soldier he's served the needs of his country and now he's looking to serve the needs of some lonely women <laughs> <laughs> mm. moving right along to Isaac the farmer he's 18 years old with his own stock of cattle and treats his animals like friends yeah, true farmer, absolutely loves his stock. He loves Aww. getting down on the farm, and now he's looking to get down with a young lady. <laughs> yay, yay, Vince. OK, next up is Mark, the news agent. He's 35. He says it's what's inside that counts. Yeah, he's, he's Mark. He owns his own uh, news agency. He's, he's an early riser. He's got his own business, and um, he's looking for a, a lady. He looks like a fun guy. Yeah, he's... <laughs> <laughs> out with him. He looks like he's from Most Haunted. <laughs> now, OK, you're going on a trip, aren't you, to, to see some of these ladies overseas who have got in contact with you, just on a friendly basis, right? Well, what it is, you know, I've, I've took a year of, of my life to try and help my village and help the men of the village, and I thought, you know, now's the time for me to do something for myself. And this story went all over the world. I was interviewed by papers, and caught, it, it caught the, the public's attention. And I've had emails from all over the world, from Peru, Brazil, Switzerland, America, Russia, Australia, and... Um... Very romantic places. Oh, yeah. I've, I've never really been out of Cumbria. Apart from the odd trip to London, I've never really been out of Cumbria, so I thought that was a good... Do you have a passport? No, I've got to get a passport. <laughs> I've, I've never even <laughs> travelled. Um, so the plan is to sort of see the world yeah. and also maybe meet some ladies, and you never know, I might... You might see me next year driving a bus full of, you know, Scandinavian women up my high street. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, I hope that is the case for you, Vince, really. And good luck. And get out there. Go travel. Have some fun. A big round of applause for Vince. Thank you so much, Vince. Thank you. Thank you. Now, my next guest exploded onto the music scene in 2003 with her debut single, Stronger Than Me. Well, now she's back with a new album, and I'm delighted to say she's here and she's going to be playing live for us. Please welcome Amy Winehouse. <laughs> from this morning. <laughs> Jane Goody's mum, Jackie, is showing off her extreme she... makeup. Fabulous. I really want to see it. And Paolo Natini is performing live. I shall see you tomorrow at five. Until then, good night. God bless. <laughs> So, as she said, more from Sharon tomorrow at five. Coming next here on ITV One, the latest news where you are this Wednesday night. Or if you fancy, you could put your brain power to the test with the puzzle book. That's on ITV Play now. I've, I've never really been out of Cumbria. Apart from the odd trip to London, I've never really been out of Cumbria. So I thought now's a, a good. Passport? No, I've got to get a passport. I've, I've never even <laughs> travelled. Um, so the plan is to sort of see the world yeah. and also maybe meet some ladies, and you never know, I might 
he might see me next year driving a bus full of, you know, Scandinavian women up my high street. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I hope that is the case for you, Vince, really, and good luck. And get out there, go travel, have some fun. A big round of applause for Vince. Thank you so much, Vince. Thank you. Thank you. Now, my next guest exploded onto the music scene in 2003 with her debut single, Stronger Than Me. Well, now she's back with a new album, and I'm delighted to say she's here and she's going to be playing live for us. Please welcome Amy Winehouse. over the next hour, I tell you, well, joining me to talk about his remarkably honest new autobiography, it's Michael Barry. <laughs> I will be meeting the daughter from hell whose mum and dad went through brat camp with her and they survived. Performing her new single live in the studio, it's the amazingly talented Amy Winehouse. <laughs> now, Michael Barrymore has had a very turbulent couple of years, but he's just returned to Britain and to the spotlight for the launch of his new book. Please welcome Michael Barrymore. <laughs> Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see it. What's that? That's Minnie. Oh, Min. Hello, Hello Min. Min. Oh. Hello. Hello, Min. <laughs> oh. What's it like to be back here? Are oh, you happy to be back? I am. I'm thrilled to be back, and I'm thrilled to get the uh, reaction from everybody that I thought, um, you know, I, I was led to believe, not by everybody, not by the public, but by certain people that, you know, I was worthless, and... Uh, I went away to get myself together and I got myself together and I come back and they've been so warm since the big brother and I realised, you know, a lot of it was in my head and all that and, you know, I had to deal with what I had to deal with and whatever, I have to remember other people have got their problems as well, you know, so... We all what? do. Yeah, we Eat all do. All so it's, it's, it's brilliant to be back and brilliant to be back in the studio where I made so, so much of my stuff. It's a bit choky at times but I think I've done enough crying this year. <laughs> <laughs> um, I must say that the book reads like a bad novel. It's like I can't believe that this is happening. Yeah, it does bang from one thing to the other. It it's does. Like it's, 
it's a really big roller coaster ride. Yeah. Because, I mean, I just remember you as, you know, the huge Michael Barrymore that everyone used to sit in and watch day after day yeah. after day. Yeah. And you were like, you know, Mr. Showbiz. Yeah. Were you happy when you were like getting all those yeah. accolades and. The trouble was, I was happy. I was happy, like in this environment with an audience. That was, you know, because I did it since I was. I knew what I wanted to do when I was eight years of age, and I'm just lucky enough to be able to do it. I didn't think this world was for me. I thought that stars come from a special place. It wasn't for the likes of me. So I was happy enough to be on stage, just get paid for what I did, and then just be in front of a crowd. And from making my mates laugh to doing it. <laughs> 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 OK, you're going on a trip, aren't you, to, to see some of these ladies overseas who have got in contact with you, just on a friendly basis, right? Well, what it is, you know, I took a year of, of my life to try and help my village and help the men of the village, and I thought, you know, now's the time for me to do something for myself, and this story went all over the world. I was interviewed by papers, and caught, it caught the, the public's attention, and I've had emails from all over the world from... Peru, Brazil, Switzerland, America, Russia, Australia, and... Um... Very romantic places. Oh, yeah. I, I, I've, I've never really been out of Cumbria. Apart from the odd trip to London, I've never really been out of Cumbria. So I thought, now's a, a good... Do you have a passport? No, I've got to get a passport. <laughs> I've, I've never <laughs> even travelled. Um, so the plan is to sort of see the world yeah. and also maybe meet some ladies, and you never know, I might... You might see me next year driving a bus full of, you know, Scandinavian women up my high street. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I hope that is the case for you, Vince, really, and good luck. And get out there, go travel, have some fun. A big round of applause for Vince. Thank you so much, Vince. Thank you. Thank you. Now, my next guest exploded onto the music scene in 2003 with her debut single, Stronger Than Me. Well, now she's back with a new album, and I'm delighted to say she's here and she's going to be playing live for us. Please welcome Amy Winehouse. <laughs> I've been black, but where I come back, oh, no, no, no. I ain't got the time, and if my daddy thinks I'm fine, try to make me go to rehab, I won't go. And it was a Friday night, you know, when you're out looking for a date, you're looking out to have a laugh. And I looked around me and there were 17 men and one girl, and the one girl was going out with the toughest man in the pub, so we didn't even <laughs> dare look at her, let alone talk to her. <laughs> Is that really true? You outnumber women 10 to 1 yeah, in Cumbria. Between the ages of 18 to 30 in my town, there's around uh, 10 more single men to available ladies. Why do you think that is? Um, well, as you know now, more, more, girls have become more independent. I mean, in the past 40 years, you know, women... It's been acceptable for women to go out and get jobs and move away, and, of course, more people are going to university. So, in small villages and in rural areas, there's a lot of jobs for men, but if you're a lady and you want success, well, they're moving away. So what I thought, if our women are leaving, then maybe there's lonely women in the city who want to replace them. So, has it worked? Well, it has. Um, a lot of men on the website have had a, a, a lot of contact. Uh, I get emails from the men of the town saying, you know, this is the best thing you've ever done for me. They, they absolutely love it. And I met a, a girl myself. She was a, a lovely girl called Charlotte. And um, I was with her for five months, but um, 
sadly was split up. The ironic thing is she didn't like the media attention and the fact I was making a documentary. Yet the first time she saw me, I was on Breakfast News and her <laughs> mum says, he looks like a nice man. You want to rig him, he's better than the boys around here. Was she your first serious girlfriend, Vince? Um, I had a, a few girlfriends before that, but she, she was the first one I really felt special about because, you know, she was kind of what I'd been looking for and it was so romantic as well. Did you know, she to... break your heart when she ended it? Um, yeah, in a way, I was, I was really sad, you know, since I split up with her, I haven't really gone for anybody because, you know, I thought I had it her, her all when I was um, with Charlotte and so I sort of took a break from the ladies to um, help my town out, see what I could do for the village. Aww. <laughs> all right. We're going to have a look at, at some of the candidates that are on your website, OK? And the first one is <laughs> Ian O'Brien, and he's 24-year-old, ex-soldier, likes working out and he's a great cook. Fabulous man. He's an ex-soldier, he's served the needs of his country and now he's looking to serve the needs of some lonely women. <laughs> <laughs> Moving right along to Isaac the farmer. He's 18 years old with his own stock of cattle and treats his animals like friends. Yeah, true farmer absolutely loves his stock. He loves Aww. getting down on the farm and now he's looking to get down with a young lady. <laughs> yay, yay, Vince. OK, next up is Mark the news agent. He's 35. He says it's what's inside that counts. Yeah, he's, he's Mark, he owns his own uh, news agency, he's, he's an early riser, he's got his own business. He shot her husband when he was vacuuming. Oh, <laughs> I don't you know are such that. an old fashioned, stereotypical idea of men, and it's yeah, so men, unfair. Why do men have you to really do the do. housework? No, a little Get a bit. Maid. Well, <laughs> I mean, I just think happy wife equals happy life. It's not a complicated My equation. My wife is happy, I think. I, I wish you were here and we could ask so, her. Yeah, I'm really glad yeah. she isn't. <laughs> well, I think that we shall um, continue to agree to disagree. I want to thank Cathy and Dylan very much. Thank you. <laughs> now, it's almost time for Sharon wants a word. But first, here's how you can enter our competition. All you have to do is answer this question. Michael Barrymore's on the show, but which show is he famous for? Is it A, My Kind of Music, B, My Kind of Food, or C, My Kind of Books? Call 0901 360 0003 or text Mrs O and then A, B or C to 84066 or press red on your remote control. Calls and texts cost a pound plus the standard network charge. Good luck. My assistant today is the fabulous Michael Barrymore. Thank you. Excuse me. Mary, will you stop barking all through the show? You've been barking. Now, our lucky caller could win a thousand pounds today. Ooh. And on the phone, we've got. Melanie from Birmingham. Hello, Melanie, how are uh, you? I'm yeah, I'm fine, all right. thank you. Yeah, I'm all right. I'm all right, thank you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> say hello to Michael. All right, Tanya. Hello, yeah, I'm all right, how are you? <laughs> all, right. <laughs> all right, now then, do you know the rules? I do. Fabulous. OK, Michael, please reveal the word of the day. The word is... Oh. Can I have... Oh. oh, this is like a madhouse in here today. Can I have the clock, please? <laughs> Set up. <laughs> Let's begin. Something you pierce. Something you pierce. The yes. ear. An ear. Right. A famous person. I'll be Osborne. Oh, thank you. Right, shut up, you. Oh, no, not you. The dog. <laughs> Something you find in a bedroom. Bed. A bed. Thank you, Michael. A fruit. An apple. Good girl. Something you buy in a supermarket. Oh, uh, Ribena. Ribena. Ooh. A type of flower. A rose. <laughs> a rose. <laughs> a form of exercise. <laughs> what are you doing? Well, she said this. What are you... A form of exercise. <laughs> I mean, I just think happy wife equals happy life. It's not a complicated My equation. My wife is happy, I think. I, I wish you were here and we could ask so, her. I'm really glad yeah. she isn't. <laughs> well, I think that 
we shall um, continue to agree to disagree. I want to thank Kathy and Dylan very much. Thank you. <laughs> now, it's almost time for Sharon wants a word, but first, here's how you can enter our competition. All you have to do is answer this question. Michael Barrymore's on the show, but which show is he famous for? Is it A, My Kind of Music, B, My Kind of Food, or C, My Kind of Books? Call 0901 360 0003 or text Mrs O and then A, B or C to 84066 or press red on your remote control. Calls and texts cost a pound plus the standard network charge. Good luck. My assistant today is the fabulous Michael Barrymore. Thank you. Excuse me. Ray, oh. will you stop barking all through the show? You've been barking. Now, our lucky caller could win a thousand pounds today. Mm. And on the phone, we've got. Melanie from Birmingham. Hello, Melanie, how are uh, you? I'm yeah, I'm fine, all right. thank you. Yeah, I'm all right. I'm all right, thank you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> say hello to Michael. All right, Tanya. Hello, yeah, I'm all right, how are you? <laughs> all, right. <laughs> all right, now then, do you know the rules? I do. Fabulous. OK, Michael, please reveal the word of the day. The word is... Oh. Can I have... Oh. oh, this is like a madhouse in here today. Can I have the clock, please? <laughs> Set up. <laughs> Let's begin. Something you pierce. Something you pierce. The yes. ear. An ear. Right. A famous person. I'll be Osborne. Oh, thank you. Right, shut up, you. Oh, no, not you. The dog. <laughs> Something you find in a bedroom. Bed. A bed. Thank you, Michael. A fruit. An apple. Good girl. Something you buy in a supermarket. Oh, uh, Ribena. Ribena. Ooh. A type of flower. A rose. <laughs> a rose. A form of exercise. <laughs> what are you doing? Well, she said this. What are you? A form Sorry, of oh. exercise. Rowing. <laughs> Rowing. Yeah. Right. An animal. An animal. A monkey. <laughs> by Bill and Sandra Kennedy and their daughter Amanda and teen tamer Loreen, my good mate. <laughs> now, Amanda, how do you feel watching that? Well, I think it's funny. <laughs> can, I, can I just ask what was funny? I don't know, just going mental. So, Showing yourself up and embarrassing yourself and doing all of that stuff is funny. If you can persuade me that's funny, I'll put my hands up. What no, was funny? I think it's funny watching it now. It weren't funny at the time, obviously. OK. The knife just terrified me. I mean, that is, like, one step beyond. Yeah. OK, Bill and Sandra. Yeah. How did your baby do after she went to camp? Oh. You know, when she come back, she went straight back into most of the things that she was doing. But she has changed quite a bit, to be quite honest. She has? She has, yeah. For the better? For the better, For the yeah. better? Yeah. In what ways has she changed? There's no more tantrums, is there? Yeah, no, she don't talk to us like, but call us names like she was calling us now. What did you hope that you would get out of the experience of going to Brat Camp? Just to stop the drugs and get on better with mum and dad. What drugs were you doing? Coke, crack, E, pot. Crack? Yeah. OK. That's it, really. And has that happened? Yeah, we get on better now. I don't take drugs anymore. <laughs> Sandra, as a mum, did it help you going along with Amanda to Brat Camp? No, I didn't. <laughs> it was really, really hard. It's really hard. Why? Well, all of it. I've never ever been camping, never done anything like that before. And I felt that we was being punished. 
I felt that we had been through enough with all the way she was behaving to us and then having to go there and do all the same as what she was doing. Did, did, did you find that the experience bonded you all? Yeah, because you were out in the desert for like three weeks and we've only got each other's company, so we can only really talk to each other. The other people you don't really know to talk to. I saw the programme and, and the problem I had was that it was kind of, it was unreal because you, you're not solving the problems where they're happening. Yeah. You're solving the problems in another place. You haven't really changed that much, have you? No. Right. So you've got no strategies when you come back from the middle of nowhere and you've actually come back to the home where everything happened the way it was before. Yeah. Are you still at school? Pound said, you know, this is the best thing you've ever done for me. They, they absolutely love it. And I met a, a girl myself. She was a, a lovely girl called Charlotte. And um, I was with her for five months, but um, sadly was split up. The, the ironic thing is she didn't like the media retention and the fact I was making a documentary. And yet the first time she saw me, I was on Breakfast News. And the <laughs> mum says, hey, looks like a nice man. You want to rig him? He's better than the boys around here. Was she your first serious girlfriend, Vince? Um, I had a, a few girlfriends before that, but she, she was the first one I really felt special about because, you know, she was kind of what I'd been looking for. And it was so romantic as well. Did you know, she to... break your heart when she ended it? Um, yeah, in a way, I was, I was really sad. You know, since I split up with her, I haven't really gone for anybody because, you know, I thought I had it her, her all when I was um, with Charlotte and stuff, so I took a break from the ladies to um, help my town out, see what I could do for the village. Aww. <laughs> all right. We're going to have a look at, at some of the candidates that are on your website, OK? And the first one <laughs> is Ian O'Brien, and he's 24-year-old ex-soldier likes working out and he's a great cook. Fabulous man. He's an ex-soldier, he's served the needs of his country and now he's looking to serve the needs of some lonely women. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Moving right along to Isaac the farmer. He's 18 years old with his own stock of cattle and treats his animals like friends. Yeah, true farmer absolutely loves his stock. He loves Aww. getting down on the farm, and now he's looking to get down with a young lady. <laughs> yay, yay, Vince. OK, next up is Mark, the news agent. He's 35. He says it's what's inside that counts. Yeah, he's, he's Mark. He owns his own uh, news agency. He's, he's an early riser. He's got his own business, and um, he's looking for a, a lady. He looks like a fun guy. Yeah, he's... <laughs> <laughs> out with him. He looks like he's from Most Haunted. <laughs> now, OK, you're going on a trip, aren't you, to, to see some of these ladies overseas who have got in contact with you, just on a friendly basis, right? Well, what it is, you know, I've, I've took a year of, of my life to try and help my village and help the men of the village, and I thought, you know, now's the time for me to do something for myself. And this story went all over the world. I was interviewed by papers, and caught, it, it caught the, the public's attention. And I've had emails from all over the world, from Peru, Brazil, Switzerland, America, Russia, Australia, and... Um... Very romantic places. Oh, yeah. I, I, I've, I've never really been out of Cumbria. Apart from the odd trip to London, I've never really... For me. Thank you, Michael. Oh, thank you so Barrymore, much. Barrymore, so much. Oh, thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you. Thank you. You're coming back in the Now, everybody knows that my family has had the odd Barney over the years, but nothing, and I mean nothing, compares with this lot. Oh. Christmas night when Amanda come home drunk or something else, she was like unbelievable. Get out of my room. As long as she was possessed. Went for a head to spin round. Luckily, Sandra's mum, who was kind of staying, come in and got hold of her, calmed her down. But it, it took a good two to three hours to calm her down. Don't get the camera off me! You're asking nicely. When you're asking nicely, you probably will. Off me. Right, no. nicely. Please. 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 Nicely. Please. 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 Please.
No. We want her back how she used to be. Or even a little bit like she used to be, not like she is now. We don't know what to do next. <laughs> I'm joined by Bill and Sandra Kennedy and their daughter Amanda and Teen Tamer Lorene, my good mate. <laughs> How do you feel watching that? Well, I think it's funny. <laughs> can, I, can I just ask what was funny? I don't know, just going mental. So, showing yourself up and embarrassing yourself and doing all of that stuff is funny. If you can persuade me that's funny, I'll put my hands up. What no, was funny? I think it's funny watching it now. It weren't funny at the time, obviously. OK. The knife just terrified me. I mean, that is, like, one step. Beyond. Yeah. OK, Bill and Sandra. Yeah. How did your baby do after she went to camp? Oh. You know, when she come back, she went straight back into most of the things that she was doing. But she has changed quite a bit, to be quite honest. She has? She has, yeah. She For, the For the better? For the better, For the better? Yeah. In what ways has she changed? Yeah. There's no more tantrums, is there? Yeah, no, but she don't talk to us like, but call us names like she was calling us now. What did you hope that you would get out of the experience of going to Brat Camp? Just to stop the drugs and get on better with mum and dad. What drugs were you doing? Coke, crack, E. We go to rehab, I said no, no, no. The man said, oh, I get the you. from this morning. <laughs> Jane Goody's mum, Jackie, is showing off her extreme make of fabulous. I really want to see you. And Paolo Natini is performing live. I shall see you tomorrow at five. Until then, good night. God bless. <laughs>so as she said more from Sharon tomorrow at 5 coming next here on ITV1 the latest news where you are this Wednesday night or if you're fancy you could put your brain power to the test with the puzzle book that's on ITV Play now